Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I am bringing to you guys is a video on some crucial tips for V Rising that the game does not make obvious. These hidden tips are going to really significantly improve your gameplay. Hopefully a few of them at least are stuff that you didn't already find out. What I'm going to do in today's video is start off with some of the earlier game stuff and then we're going to progress onto some of the harder stuff and some of the mid game sections. Now I will give you spoiler alerts if there's anything major that I'm going to talk about so feel free to skip those parts and as always with these videos there will be timestamps down below so that specific sections of the video if you want to rewatch them or skip towards them you can always do so but I do appreciate everybody that watches the full video. So jumping straight into it the first thing of course is to use the mist braziers. These things are really really key especially early game when you still have a wooden castle wall section and what they essentially do is sit on the floor like this here you can interact with it you put your bones in you click toggle and if this is in an open area it creates a mist around it which blocks sunlight now this is super super crucial towards the start of the game like I said where you've still got those wooden walls going on you qu haven't quite upgraded to a stone castle yet or if you want to have an outside section so for example during the daytime, I sometimes move this mist brassiere outside to the little garden that I have going on right here. And that is super helpful because it does mean that we're not going to take damage from that. And it only costs bones, which a lot of you guys will have pretty early on in the game. Now another thing that's really crucial to get early on in V Rising is of course the Grave Dust and this one is actually pretty easy to acquire once you learn how to get it. There is a couple of main ways in which you can obtain Grave Dust. Firstly is by going to any of the cemetery locations on the map, so for example the Forgotten Cemetery down the bottom area here which is kind of the starting zone. This one will drop you Grave Dust when you kill some of the mobs there or destroy kind of the environment, the pots, the crates, that kind of stuff. The other way that you're really able to get this pretty much early on is through using bones in the grinder now a lot of you guys will probably already have a grinder in your base even if you didn't know this tip because it's how you make these stone bricks but obviously if you put the bones in there you can see the recipe is unlocked here and it gives you 75 bones gives you one of these grave dust now this might be a little more expensive this might be a hundred bones for you if you haven't got the right floor but if you can get this in a room with the floor 75 bones per grave dust and you will eventually start to rack up a fairly decent supply of bones so you can get yourself sorted with this early on and start making some of that better gear. Now early game it is very much worth making a trip up towards kind of the middle of the map here just into the Dunley farmlands pretty much just to the sides of it here you guys will see there is a little section just to the side here called the farm this one actually has some horses in and it's the same over at this side you can go past the militia encampment to this farm and there is horses there. Be careful not to go to the left hand side as this army outpost area is a much higher level zone. But these ones, as soon as you've got a basic set of gear, you're able to go up there and you'll be able to get yourself a horse. Now horses are mounts in V Rising that you can get. Each of them, if you press tab near it or press tab once you're mounted onto the horse, once you've actually claimed it, it will show you they have a max speed, an acceleration and a rotation speed. Now this is different on every horse so make sure that you try and get a good one but any horse to start with is better than none and these massively improve your travel time around the world. As you can see the map is absolutely huge and depending upon where you put your base you're always going to need to travel so do have a look at this. It's also worth noting that putting the water filled canteens in the horse's inventory prolongs the life of them and if they do run out of life unfortunately they do die so especially if you've got a really good horse you want to make sure you keep them alive for as long as possible. I'm just going to show you guys the other horse I have right now to show you the difference in stats as well this is kind of my main guy he's got a big max speed not much acceleration but a decent rotation speed which means generally you can get out of the way of enemies and as you can see putting in about seven water flasks there gives it 55 hours worth of time to be alive for so again these these you can get from pretty much any of the mobs in the Fairbane woods area this is a nice sustainable way to get a lot of traveling fast particularly if you don't have the wolf form yet or even if you do have the wolf form these are actually a lot faster so you definitely want to get yourself a horse as soon as possible. Now the next thing here is if you go into a container, this can be a chest, a bookshelf when you get further into the game or any of the other containers, not spoiling it too much for everybody that is still in the early game section. 
What you can do is this button down here on the character side of the screen called compulsively count. This will transfer items from your inventory if the same type already exists in the container. So you can see the regular ruby and the crude amethyst I have here. If we click that, it sends them all into the stacks that are already there. This is a really quick way when you come into your base from going out and looting to actually sort stuff into the right containers. You can simply click through all of your containers, flowers, compulsively count, and it'll put them all in there that are the same variety as what you've already got. Great way to keep your storage nice and clean and tidy and stack stuff on top of places if it already has a holder, which at the start of the game when you're struggling for chests and things is a really big lifesaver. Now, if you ever start to feel stuck or lost for what to do in V Rising, you always want to go to the Blood Altar and start to track down some of these bosses. Now, when you first start the game, some of these will seem very difficult, but once you get a couple under your belt, you'll understand what they do and, you know, kind of what they give you. So if you click onto them, once you have the required power level to be able to kill them, they'll show up and it will tell you that it'll give you a power. Usually it doesn't tell you what the power is, it'll just be a question mark. And then it will tell you what structures or kind of recipes that you get from killing these. Now, if I scroll down, tension, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but if I scroll down to where I'm able to get to on this server at the moment, we've got the Octavia, the Militia Captain, level 58 is the highest level one I can do. This would give me the anvil structure, it will give me three recipes right here, and it will also give me a random power, which I will be able to see once I've gone ahead and killed them. Now, some of these bosses are pretty difficult, so you may want to make friends with someone on the server. I'm on a PvP server, and I've managed to team up with a few people for the bosses, which has been really cool. And we've also had some kind of fights around the bosses, which also is cool. But if you aren't able to team up with anybody on the server, or it's quite a hostile server, do just be prepared to use as many of your abilities. Try and take some potions, try and take some healing pots, that sort of stuff, to keep yourself alive longer, because this can be pretty tricky. But those generally will unlock the next tier of progression, whether it's, you know, getting yourself your first stuff down here, where you're able to then make the alchemy table so you can get your potions or whether it's going to be something like you go down here and you get your woodworking bench for the first time or more importantly your tannery for the first time which then allows you to build armor to be more powerful to take on the next section and be able to build your base in turn as well which is a really really cool thing to be getting on with now like i said there based on your current power level it will say to you that your gear score is too low or your gear level is too low for certain bosses this is generally a good indicator personally I like to stick away from the final two if I can because 56 and 58 when I'm 51 it's cutting it a bit close but I can certainly do all of the ones in their 40s now and any lower ones that I haven't yet picked up so that is generally a good indicator however any of the ones that are on here you should be able to kill if you see one with a skull whilst you're roaming though I would probably run away now, following on from that on the same route of the bosses, these are generally a good idea to kill as they will sometimes drop books, which will allow you to unlock different technologies at your research desk, which is the first one you get. And a little bit of a spoiler here if you haven't seen the images yet. And this will continue into the next tier once you unlock the study, you'll get the books for this one, etc, etc. But another really good function of the research desk or the study or later ones, which I won't go into in this video, is that you can actually use, for example, here on the research desk, 50 paper, and you can click discover at the top when you have that in your inventory and it will actually unlock for you a brand new random technology now this could be one of the weapons one of the armor pieces one of the jewelry pieces a consumable or a structure piece it's not going to tell you it's going to be completely random so you may get lucky if we have a look on the study on this server i've just broke into the study technologies and you can see i have been lucky enough to get the merciless iron mace as well as the merciless iron slashes and the merciless hollow fang boots but obviously i haven't got everything that i wanted so i've got a few decorative pieces as well which are good and the structure stuff is really really good as well but of course you want to try and get the progression stuff so you can kill more bosses to build more things but either way the study actually uses scrolls and this is a really good way to progress once you get up to like for example now i've just unlocked the study uh, a few hours ago in this game mode it's a really good way that you can get yourself leveled up fastest way to do this if you hover over some of these smaller like the bandit camps or the militia encampments these will drop it says here paper or scrolls just go around and farm some of these smaller areas as long as you're within the gear range it's generally fairly easy to do if you just take the mobs bit by bit you can just farm up a lot of scrolls make sure you kill all of the barrels all of the crates all of the chests loot all of those stuff in the areas as they will drop books and they will also drop the components of so the scrolls or the paper and this is a really quick way to get yourself some of these new 
new technologies unlocked when you do progress to a new tier that can actually really help you in gaining power so that you can take on the next boss or you can take on the area more easily to farm up yourself some copper, some iron, whatever material you're currently on. And this is a great way to give yourself a nice little boost as soon as you unlock something brand new. Now as a side note with this, sometimes when you go into places like the militia encampment you will see people will have cleared the mobs but often they do not destroy all of the breakable objects. The reason I would do this is twofold. Firstly, you get materials. So for example, when you get up to the militia encampment area, you will get things like linen, you will get things like glass. But on top of that, they do have the opportunity to, of course, drop the scrolls, but also the full books, which I have got very rarely, but I have got a couple of them. So it is super worthwhile doing and a lot of players miss out on this opportunity. Literally just destroy everything you can. Everything has a chance to drop loot. And of course, if you get a golden chest, then they have a really good chance at giving you some rare items. So always try and loot those. Now the next thing we're going to talk about here is the unsullied hearts. These are kind of the more red looking hearts that you get compared to the tainted ones which are these like purpley red ones. Now there may be points where you use these as consumables to get a little bit of blood up if you are running low because of course if you do run low you start to take damage so you want to keep this up as much as possible. The reason you want to save the unsullied hearts and this is a little bit of a spoiler so if you haven't got to this point in the game maybe look away for a little second here but when you go into the blood press you are able to convert three of these into a greater blood essence and this is by default as soon as you unlock the blood press. Now this is really good because you will start to need greater blood essence essences as you progress in the game fairly regularly and until you kill one of the bosses which I'm not going to go into full details of and unlock the new recipe which allows you to convert essence into it it is going to be a while before you can do that it's a particularly hard boss to kill and yeah basically this is going to be your main way to get these early game and you do need them for a lot of upgrades and that sort of stuff to get your gear better to construct some buildings and some workstations so you certainly want to save up all of the unsullied hearts don't consume them by accident they are really worth keeping because this great blood essence is going to be a time where you're going to need them and you'll be glad that you've saved them so definitely definitely don't throw them out and definitely do not use them now the next thing here is going to be around servants and particularly not throwing away your gear once you have a servant. So this section is going to be a spoiler about servants. Again, if you don't want to hear about it, skip to the next section. If you find hearing a little bit about it, I'm not going to go into too much depth. Then we're about to commence that now. So if I go into my servant coffin here, you can see that they are away on a hunt for 12 hours, which if you guys didn't know, you once you've got servants, you can actually send them on missions, which you can kind of change the variables on. They'll have better success rates, but take longer or lower success rates but take less time and you can see here that they have a power level and an expertise now the power level is based upon the gear that you put onto this servant so in other words don't get rid of your old sets because you can simply put them onto a servant and that gives them more power to be able to complete better missions and earn you more rewards passively whilst you are playing now the expertise boosts the amount of power acquired from equipment so of course the better ones will have better expertise but this is just the first person i managed to pick up on this server as a servant for myself they do have you know different abilities and such which i will go into in a different video but the main thing here is keep your old gear to put onto your servants so that you can send them away on these missions and they will actually be be able to do damage and have a higher chance of success to bring you back some loot just for literally playing the game which is really really nice next we're looking up to the top left of the screen on the journal and the quests here as you guys will be able to see i've got construct and interact with the eye of twilight right now i'm not able to get some of the materials to build that one so i'm in a pretty good spot meaning that i'm basically up to date with the quests but as soon as you start to hit the late early game or the early mid game these are going to really matter and it is going to guide you in a way where you're able to get onto the servant system and upgrade your castle heart and that sort of stuff and that is going to be a massive progress boost to your game so make sure that you are following these it's kind of self-explanatory to follow them but some points players tend to drop off them but they do unlock stuff for you to build as well so it is really really crucial and they do give you some really good rewards so make sure you're staying on top of those now this final point here is again a bit of a spoiler but we're going to be talking about the way that you set up your castle. Once you get to around the mid game level where you're starting to unlock the iron type stuff and these big workstations, the tailoring bench for example, if these have the correct flooring they will produce things quicker and for a cheaper price. So if we have a look here at the grinder for example, this one obviously castle heart is powered, yes, in a confined room which just means that you've got a floor down and walls all around it. So I've got that and that gives you a plus 25 production bonus, meaning that it's quicker to complete tasks by 25 percent 
And finally, the thing that you can get here is a matching floor. And this is, of course, a workshop floor. It will tell you on each individual station what they require in order to get this perk active. And it needs to be underneath the station that requires it. And essentially, if you have that, it will reduce the costs of crafting with that station by 25%. So, for example, here to get the grave dust, like I talked about towards the beginning of the video, it only costs me 75 bones as opposed to 100 it would cost if I didn't have it on the correct floor. Now, this might seem a bit negligible on the grinders but if we go ahead and look at the tailoring bench which I don't have it on the correct floor for you can see that you need leather cotton yarn wool thread which when you first get to these can be a little bit expensive and if we go over to look at the metals and that sort of stuff these are going to be even more expensive and you're going to need a lot of the stuff the further you progress into the game it becomes quite expensive quite quickly so the more that you can save by doing that it is going to save you a lot of time and effort you can see here this is on a forge floor and it actually only costs me 15 iron or to get an ingot instead of 20, which means that I'm going to get a lot more for my efforts, which is really, really beneficial. And as I say, once you guys get into this game a little bit, you'll understand how much you actually do need of all of the materials. Having the correct floor under your stations is going to super, super benefit you guys, and I cannot recommend that enough. So that is pretty much going to be it for today's video, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed and found this useful. Hopefully some of these tips you hadn't already discovered. And if you are someone that knew most of these, and maybe you've got some tips that would also benefit some players that are not not immediately obvious in the game please do drop them in the comments down below if you've got any questions at all about the game do drop them in the comments as well i will try my best to answer them and help you all out in your progression and i hope you are all enjoying v rising as much as me this game is fantastic there'll be more content coming to the channel on this game very very shortly so do make sure you're subscribed if you do want to see that make sure you're dropping me a like if you found this video useful and informative and i will catch you guys again very very shortly on a brand new upload so take care and peace